I'm representing Hendon School Songwriting Group. Um, we were working with Rob Cassell to produce Record Shop Revolution. Our mini musical is based around Phil's music shop. He feels the need to employ two new assistants to help him and his hippie friend to create more profits for the shop and to make it all he dreamed it would be. During eight after school sessions, we came up with a storyline and five songs around the theme of stereotypical music tastes and clashing personalities. We all really enjoyed working with Rob, who was our driving force and our mentor. He made this project such a great experience. We aim to put on a stage production of our mini musical later this year, um, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Singing is my pleasure My childhood consisted of smiles and tears Bottled up of my joys and fears Looking back at the past Now my dreams have come true Look at me now, I'm a music maniac Having tracks and a record To think when I first opened this little place, and it seems just like yesterday, man. Even then, I had to struggle to keep pace with the new fads and new fashions, you know? But I had the energy, and the hippies were united, staring into the future. I wonder what the next step will be. Will people even buy records at all in five years' time? I don't know, man. My childhood consisted of smiles and tears Bottled up for my joys and fears Looking back at the past All my dreams have come true Shot by my side, earning millions and billions and a house worth trillions, having tracks and a record stack. I look at me now, I'm a music maniac. Yeah, man, I am one groovy music maniac. But like I say, I need to spread the love and get some new ideas going on in the record shop. My assistant Sky here, hey, where are you, Sky? My assistant Sky here, she's laid back and she is rocking. Okay, but we've put out an ad to get some new staff, and we've had loads of applications. I mean, I wonder who we're going to get. Hey, wait a sec. It looks like the first one's on his way in. Tell you what, man, you're a great musician. No, it's 
was time to go. Then we'll only fit her. 
change. <laughs> Peace, people. Hey, a lot has happened since we got the new staff along. You know, I gave them the task of running the shop without me. You know, mix things up, man. What I did tell them is that I was on my way out, out of this world, literally. I'm talking to you guys here from the record shop, but only in spirit, deep. Hey, hey, I had a good life, and it was time for me to go and groove with the Grateful Dead up in the spirit world of rock. The guys at the shop didn't have any idea that I was on my last legs. They were just fighting and arguing, competing over whose music was better. I tell you what though, that competitive spirit meant that the record shop was really rocking. It was a crazy time. Finally, they heard the news about me and they were pretty bummed out, man. But they found the letter I wrote them too, which helped to explain a few things. Some people see the world in red, some see the world in blue. You're part of the group, a part of the trio And don't you worry, you'll be fine without me Just fine without me and Let yourself free, and trust and believe Cause you're all great people, you're all great people and Let yourself free, and trust and believe but We want the world to see some people see the world in red, some see the world in blue. Although they're different colors, they mean purple, ain't that true? I want you to know, when I'm gone, it's clear to me from what you've shown, that you've proved everyone wrong.
in school, which is obviously about a dozen individuals. Just before I hand over to our panel, did people get described individual songs, or was it a communal effort? Or how did that work? It was, well, um, it was sort of fairly ad hoc, right, Rob? <laughs> um, we, we sort of tried to model up the story together and wanted to make it as clever as possible, but obviously you know, we ended up dividing up into lots of subgroups. The nice thing was that we were working with, with a really mixed age range, so sometimes we sort of divided that up, uh, mixing the ages in small groups, sometimes you know, six forms go away and work on something, year nines go away and work on something, and then, and then bring it back and show it at the end. Um, and we'd also try and polish it up together. And uh, so just one other thing I think is important for you guys to know that across the, we sort of, I think, used the skill set. So some guys, you know, had a couple of great guitar players who helped with more than one song. And that was where they kind of found their niche. And similarly, some, some of the girls who were really good with lyrics, they helped with more than one song. So everybody kind of crossed over and helped. Thank you. Yeah, cool. I've, I've not really been, uh, I kind of got a bit carried away with it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really said that. Really, from the first number, I just kind of put my pen down, and then to the second number, I thought, oh, I better write something. Um, I thought it was amazingly well structured. I, I, I thought lyrically it worked brilliantly. I thought your performance was Oscar winning, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, but um, taking that away from it and, and, and bringing it back to what the actual the morning is about, um, I thought the first, strong, first song was very well structured. I loved the second song. Um, I didn't know if it was slightly too long, but then again, each character was so well observed that you, you kind of forgave that by the time you got to the end of it. But um, I wasn't sure about I didn't understand why it didn't have the same repeat all the way through until the last one, because uh, I really loved that, um, uh, no, you're not employed, go, please go, and, and then the last two, you change it. Yeah, I actually shot that wrong. Oh, okay, great. Uh, well, so, and I apologise, guys, but it, it's yeah. supposed to imply lyrically, therefore, that he's not just going to send these last two away. Oh, okay. He's actually thinking about, yeah, so they, they, you know, theatrically, it's sort of like, oh, maybe this one will be. There's a little bit of a cliffhanger, which I totally screwed up. Well, that's credit to the piece. <laughs> but in, in essence, that's credit to the piece for me to pick that up. To know that there was something missing from it, that, that's, a, that's a credit to the writing and the solidity of the writing as it was. Um, uh, the, the third piece, again, I just put lovely. Um, the fourth song, uh, I felt it lost something in the middle. Uh, again, I, I'm not as technical minded as these two gentlemen, I'm sure they'll put it, give you specifics, but it, it just got a bit kind of... You know, like a bit like hot cheese. It just kind of started to, kind of, to, to me, though, it kind of just got a bit kind of loose and saggy in the middle. And that's a shame because everything around it is so strong. You know, it just find, needs to find something. Um, and I haven't put anything off that last number. It's a great end of show number. And, and I'm sure, as Jeremy will say, it's the noise he made at the end was that key change was uh, quite glorious, really. Every, song, every single like's a key change if it's in the range. So I'll push you on. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. What was lovely was that, because um, what you've done in this project, which is to bring all sorts of skills together of various sorts, raw talent, and to shape it into a story and a thing, and ultimately, it made us all it made me really happy. Um, <laughs> it made us all really happy. And to be honest, why I found that touching is it's exactly what we try to do on a good day, which is take different talents, listen to them, all sorts of skills, hopefully as a group when we put on a show, make shapes, make stories, make characters, and as a result of that, we hope, make people happy. I think the point about musicals is that they really do, and everyone's got a musical they see at some point in their childhood, or in your case, life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which has actually made them really, really happy. And that, ultimately, is the, is the trick of it to take all those different bits together. What was really grown up about that, and actually this is, covers everything to, to, today, but the attempt to, um, which is very successful, to characterise people. I thought the idea of having uh, people's character reflected in the music they sang is it. That is musical theatre in a nutshell. A different person would sing in a different way. So I love the idea of typifying these people by the music they're into, and that made their characters, and again, you saw our actors shining because they had something to play. Um, and, but the idea that a different character sounds differently musically because of who he is pretty much defines musical theatre from the top to the bottom. Um, 
every bit of it. Uh, so I thought that was fantastic. I love the idea that, that again, with guidance, obviously, but it's a team effort. You know, there's nothing wrong with being guided by professionals. Again, this is exactly what we do. I, you know, give my ideas to professionals to help me make them work. People bring me their ideas to make it work. This collaboration is exactly what the what the musical theatre world is about. But I love the fact that it had a shape. Um, it went somewhere, uh, and it had a message, which is all, that's all nice to get to each other, which you can't say often enough. And I love the idea that red and blue are different, but they make purple, <laughs> um, and, and which is cool. And I really think that that may sound simple or feel simple, but the best music theatre has the simplest message, and it really touched me. And, and if I don't get another chance, the same is true of the, of the whole day. The whole morning. I can't believe that you guys are remotely interested in doing what we do. Um, <laughs> that pleases us so much. Um, but like I say, the, the Holy Grail always is, and the template for something wonderful is, it is in everything I've heard this morning. The questions all over again, which is how does someone sound when they have a feeling? How does someone sound when they have a problem? That's what these musical theatre things are about, and they're different from pop songs. They really are. Um, a pop song has a moment like frozen in time almost, but a musical theatre has a song has a discovery, a journey. In other words, how do I feel about what I'm feeling is the question to ask. And I thought that was approached in every possible way, in a very mature way. So thank you for that. And this is Matt. Yeah, I'm, I, uh, I'm glad Jeremy mentioned this about red and blue making purple because I thought that was such a, just to begin in the middle, that was such a lovely image for togetherness. And Sorry to interrupt. Girls, can you just stand up? The girls who were working on that song with Michael. The red and blue making purple. There you go. <laughs> it's, it's a fresh, vivid image, and it's, it's lovely and sort of oddly touching. And the whole sequence was very touching, and it begins with this image of solitude, an only boy, that was his past, his future, he doesn't know what it holds. And the, the arc of the piece is towards a sort of togetherness, a union, a diversity, which he sings in hope of. And so the, the arc of the, the mini musical is, is encoded in really the very first set of lyrics. And then we proceed to see how it works itself out. Uh, immensely touching. The sort of job applicant sequence, that's the kind of thing I'm a real sucker for. <laughs> Michael Bennett wrote a whole musical about that called The Chorus Line, which is an extended audition. And the audition is, of course, a kind of job application. And it, it is just great to see. Um, I think if I had any lyrical nitpicking, it was probably in the very first piece, maybe this is more detailed than is appropriate, but just things like looking uh, back at the past, my dreams have come true, great. But then we're told, all I need now is for my dreams to come true, and you think, oh, I thought they did come true, but now you need them to come true. So, a, a little fuzziness there, but these are just minor quibbles. I think this is the sort of show where you want to know more about the people, you want to engage with the characters more. It does make you happy, uh, it makes you smile spontaneously and instantaneously, and what more could you ask of musical theater? Beautifully performed, by the way, by everyone. So, thank you. Our esteemed panel here, so thanks, guys. Really good. Time. I think just before we, we, we close, let's hear another uh, few words from our company here. They've got anything to say on the, on, on the second half. Thank you. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I, I, again, I, I've had a great time, and particularly, I think, as, as the guy said, that. Um, you can tell when an actor really enjoys a song because, it, I mean, for me, <clears throat> when I got Robert Bank, first time I ever sang it, it, it just kind of, it was pretty much that. Uh -huh. uh, just because it's so there on the page, you, you can't, it's screaming it. So it's so nice to actually have that as an actor, to just have to do as little as possible, really. <laughs> uh, but um, I, don't know, I, I just kind of wish I'd had this um, opportunity when I was about 16 and on, because uh, I think it's absolutely fab fabulous. Um, and uh, whoever does carry on, and I hope you do, as musicians and writers, um, remember, remember me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've got a, I 
absolutely reiterate what Evan said. I love this morning. Um, and it's just been lovely working for as long as I've been on this big calm tree, you know, this piece. And it's been fantastic. That was so much fun. The two I did in the second act. Um, really fun. And like you said, uh, performing them, it just helps us when they're so well written that we don't have to find like we have to kind of set the teeth through and go oh, that's that works that doesn't this was really exciting to do this whole project was great to do and i've loved every minute of performing your pieces for you that is slightly nerve-wracking i think for any performer to perform for the people who wrote it because you knew when i didn't sing the right things um <laughs> but i hope that we did your pieces justice and um thank you very much for a really amazing project thank you Uh, yeah, and quickly, so, uh, thank you, thanks for having us, thanks for letting us sing your, your fantastic uh, work. Um, I remember when I was at drama school, uh, we had somebody come in and we wrote a piece um, around a guitar, um, it was based in a music festival, and it's just a chance for you to sit around and jam and create and uh, put together, you know, some amazing music, and these songs will stick with you. Um, already we were at home last night, didn't we, like singing, singing them, yep. you know, on the tube, and because uh, you know them, you, they've all stick with you for ages, and I just, I just you know, that's brilliant. Keep being creative and keep writing and just keep doing what you're doing. And yeah, well done. It's been really good. Thank you. Um, just very quickly, um, I uh, first of all, I really valued working with these guys just yesterday. Uh, they've done a huge amount in a really short time. It was really brilliant to, to see that come together. And I think you guys really should uh, appreciate you know, the kind of quality of performers who are doing your work. It's a great honour. You should you know, take that home and be proud of that. Um, from my point of view, performing, that's what I'm talking about in this context, um, performing the songs, it's, it's quite easy because the songs are catchy and your instincts are very, very good. And I think there's some really good points uh, from the panel about like, you can, you can hone, you can add detail, you can finesse, you know, we talked about that all the way through the process. And there's still a journey to go, this is essentially a draft, yeah, of a show. But your instincts are really good, your ideas are really good and you should be confident in those moving forward, you know, really, really feel as though um, you've got lots to give to this whole kind of process, and I hope you keep on doing it as well with you again. Thank you. Um, I was talking to one of the writers down here, and I, I, I just want to say that the process doesn't have to be angst. It doesn't have to take forever. Sometimes you will wake up and you will have an idea and you will write it down it will take five, tw te five, 10, 20 minutes and it will be the greatest thing that you've ever written. Sometimes you will have to spend hours and hours. There is no method to it. Don't stifle your writing. There was a one, little, one young um, girl that came up and said, ah, my writing's terrible, I hate my writing, I hate my writing, I think I write absolute rubbish. You mustn't do that. There are enough people in the world that will tell you that your writing is terrible. Don't do it for yourself. <laughs> this morning by saying that I really feel we've become a temporary little family this morning and a big thank you to everybody involved but there were a couple of people I missed out earlier and that is I want to thank Hattie Hay who's very kindly been our stage manager and David Warwick from representing the Arts Theatre who's done the technical know how for it. And I just want to say that none of this can happen without funders, people who actually help support Mousetrap Foundation, oh, in your old name, Mousetrap Theatre Projects. Um, we have three very kind funders for this project, the Aranda Foundation, Paul and Jill Ruddock, and the Williams Charitable Trust. So although they're not here today, we still want to thank them. Enjoy your holidays, your holidays start today, yeah? so enjoy. <laughs>